Powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Now, live from inside the Matt Black Kia Studios, it's Football at Four. It is Football at Four, powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Adam Kaplan is here. It's brought to you today by East Coast Roofing, Siding, and Windows. Serving all the South Jersey, if you call, they'll show up online at eastcoastroofing.com. Adam Kaplan in the house as we look at Eagles and Packers and his power rankings as uh, obviously we are uh, into the double digit season there, Adam Kaplan. Once we get to Thanksgiving, we are now into are you real or not real? The, the, the contenders start to rise, the non contenders start to fall, so we'll get into your power rankings as well. But we start off with hopefully everybody out there and Adam has a great Thanksgiving. How are you, buddy? Good to talk to you guys. Yeah, uh, have a safe and wonderful Thanksgiving, everybody. So, yeah, look, the Chiefs right now, and I said this last week, they're the team that has the least amount of issues as we go forward here as we enter to Week 12. From an injury standpoint, they also got Frank Clark, one of the best pass rushers back from his two-game suspension. So they come in pretty healthy. They actually, they put Clyde edwards helaire their starting running back, or their former starting running back. He got replaced by Rutgers' Isaiah Pacheco a couple weeks ago as their starter. So, Things have changed there. I got the Eagles at two. The Cowboys, look, I moved them way up. I know the I know the Vikings were exhausted from that game before, but boy, to, to thrash a team on the road by 37 in their own building, that's pretty incredible. Move the Vikings down one. The Bills are at, at five. They, they they had an impressive win over the Browns after a slow start. Incredibly, they're playing in Detroit again, Mike, this week, four days later. Uh, they decided to fly home, back to Buffalo, then fly back. Dolphins come back off their bye at six. Ravens come back after the bye at seven. And, you know, the team that we have at eight here at InsideTheBirds.com is the Niners. And just like last year, Mike, I think they can make a run. They are now six and four playing really good football. They've gotten the healthiest they've been in two months. The Titans, after a very impressive win, uh, really, really handled the Eagles opponent this week, the Packers, in, in Green Bay last week. We got them at nine. And we got the Seahawks coming after their bye at ten. They had a bad loss in Germany against the, the Bucks, but man, what a surprise the Seahawks have been this season. All right, let me ask you, Adam, of your top 15, how many of those teams do you surmise in your mind at this stage of the season as legitimate Super Bowl contenders? I mean, of that list, do you look at some of those teams and say, hey, they're playoff teams, but they're not Super Bowl teams? How many are we at this stage how many are still, in your mind, a legit contender? Chiefs, Eagles, Cowboys, Bills, Niners, Titans. I like the I like the Traylon Burks, their first-round rookie receiver out of Arkansas, had a big breakout game last week. So one, two, three, four, five, six teams, I would say. I, I, I don't see the Ravens because they have trouble scoring. Dolphins, Tua to me, he's in an offense that works for him. Worry about the injury history. They're just a step below like the Vikings are. I put the Vikings and Dolphins, Mike, a step below those Super Bowl-type teams. And then the Bengals, though, they're getting some injured players back. I don't think their defense will be good enough. The, I do believe the Buccaneers will make a run for the NFC but not get to the Super Bowl. And then the Jets, obviously, made the change of quarterback. We moved them down from 10 to 15. And the Commanders... Mike, they, they're on a winning streak here, but the, the thing is, at some point, you got to throw the football. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so there you go. There is uh, Adam Kaplan's Inside the Birds NFL Team Power Rankings and his thoughts on the legitimate Super Bowl contenders. How many are there? He goes about, it sounded like about six deep there yep. in your yep. mind. All right, let's uh, take a look at this matchup. Eagles-Packers. They have met um, Aaron Rodgers versus the Eagles. Four and one. And I guess the question is here, with John Gannon's style of defense and the way uh, that they can kind of, you know, let you throw a little dink and dunks here, uh, do you worry about Aaron Rodgers having a game like, uh, you know, this this Green Bay team just beat Dallas two weeks ago, putting up 30 points. So is this matchup a concern with Aaron Rodgers and the what we know he can do? Yeah, sure. Look, he, he, Rodgers and Christian Watson, they finally – got their chemistry together. Watson up to two weeks ago only had 10 receptions on the season. And he just had two huge weeks, five touchdowns and two games that were played with, within four days of each other. And he could run, and he's about 6'4". I mean, he could fly. Someone with the senior ball run by everybody. Uh, the problem is route running. He's not advanced, doesn't have great hands. 
Romeo Dobbs, their other starting receiver, he's a high ankle sprain. He might start working this week, but he's not expected to play. Both their tackles are coming back from major knee injuries. They've missed some time this season, especially left tackle David Bakhtiari. He's not the same player he once was. If you look at their injury issues, Mike, Devondre Campbell, their star middle linebacker, inside linebacker, they play a 34. He's missed time due to a knee injury with Sean Gary, the best pass rusher. He's out for the season with an ACL injury. One of their starting corners, Eric Stokes, he's on IR, not expected to return this season. This is why Rasul Douglas, who started the season as their slot corners, moved outside. And that's the guy to me, Mike, in this matchup. You talk about could Rodgers get it going here? Well, on the other side, the Eagles have to go at him. They know him well. I know this staff was not – they don't really have any experience with him, but the front office does, and so does the pro scouting staff. So I would expect Russell Douglas to have the, the bullseye on him. And, you know, they're a very finesse defense. They're very talented, the Packers, Mike, but they don't play up to it for whatever reason. But I, I do expect the Eagles to go after the secondary. The other thing is – the one area you could really get them is against the run. They're 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 in the bottom half of, of run defenses. They're very inconsistent against it. Now I know the Eagles won't run the ball out. That's not what they do. But what they do is they like to get a lead, then pound the rock. So that's the hope here. But this is a fun game. Uh, it's supposed to rain all day, not most of the day Sunday, but clear up by the game. You know, one issue, Mike. I, I might have brought this up before, but I talked to a bunch of people who were at that Monday night game two weeks ago against Washington. The crowd was dead. Uh, a couple of people told me they, who have season tickets, they've never seen anything like it. I don't know that it's because Wentz wasn't playing, it was Taylor Heineke. Whatever the case is, i got to think the crowd will be sky high for this game. Uh, you know, it's interesting that you bring up. The, the, the Eagles have played a bunch in prime time. They had a Thursday night. They've had Sunday night. There's another Sunday night. I mean, they have not played a lot of Sunday at 1 o'clock games here. Like the, you know, And you wonder how much these players get into routine. Sunday 1 o'clock, Sunday 1 o'clock. And they're, they're just not at that spot right now. And this is a Sunday night game for them. Yeah, this will be their fifth. They had four last year. They were one and three in prime time. They're three and one this season. I would say the last game was with, against Washington. Now, the rest of the season, they're going to get flexed. In fact, the, the game against Tennessee next Sunday at 1 p.m. here, I'd be very surprised if it's not flexed to 4 o'clock. The, the week 40 game, 1 o'clock. At the Giants could be flexed. So the Giants now, they, they might be going on a downward trend, but that could be flexed. Week 18, week, week 15 at Chicago, That I'm sure that'll stay the same at, 4 p, at 1 o'clock. Now, the week 16 game, that's Christmas Eve. That's one of the games at at, uh, at 4 o'clock. That's a Saturday game, I believe, right? In week 16, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, then the January 1st game at home against New Orleans is at 1 o'clock. I'm sure that game won't mean anything for New Orleans. But the week 18 game, Mike. They haven't even put a time on it. That, that, that almost certain. If that game means anything for New York, it'll definitely be uh, a, a 4 o'clock game. Or even could be the Sunday night game. Yeah. Yeah, Adam, you look at uh, Aaron Rodgers. Obviously, the Packers struggling this year. Rodgers not getting any younger. Um, Rodgers has had success against the Eagles, albeit 4-1 uh, in his career. Uh, so what what is Aaron Rodgers really bringing to the table? And what is... You know, the cause for that success in the last five games play a role uh, as we look ahead to this matchup on Sunday night prime time. Yeah, Ryan, the one issue with Rodgers is that you know, he's got this right thumb injury, and he did not throw the ball. He actually talked about it. He had a couple wobblers against Tennessee. He just didn't throw the ball well. But Mike alluded to it. When he's at his best, he has an incredibly quick release between 1.7 seconds and 2.3 and that, that's when he's at his best. Now, he's had timing issues with his receivers. His tight end, Robert Tunyon, has not had a good season coming off his knee, his ACL injury. But what you have to do, because you're not going to really get to him much. Got to get your hands up. You got to get physical with the receivers. And don't let Christian Watson run downfield, Ryan. You can't do that. that yeah. That's the one issue I have with, with this, this team is that sometimes – they don't get physical enough as, uh, against the receivers, and I expect that to happen in this game. Uh, Adam, we're, uh, we, we talked about, Mike talked about with you, your, your power rankings, a uh, great article which can be viewed uh, over at InsideTheBirds.com. Uh, NFC wild card race is really interesting, so just sort of to piggyback off of your power rankings that uh, you guys broke down, and it can tie into this matchup because you would think if the Packers – want to sneak in to the playoffs, you know, th this is a must-win game. So that could be, you know, an underlying factor and maybe the Packers playing above 
you know, their pay grade, if you will. Well, this to me, Ryan, is a must game. They have to have this game at four yeah. and seven. It's like the Cardinals, guys. The Cardinals are four and seven. They need to beat the Chargers. So, yeah, I mean, I'm sure they'll come out and have some urgency. But, again, it's about matchups. Packers are line banged up. The Eagles, by the way, they don't have any players on the injury report this week except one guy, and that's Josh Job has had this recurring hamstring problem who probably will not play. But they're in, you know, they're, they're in pretty good shape, uh, actually, injury-wise. Um, no, by, oh, by the way, with the prime time, you can only have five games on prime time. But there might there might be an exception for week eighteen. We'll keep we'll find out about that. We'll keep an eye on it. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Well, you know what, Adam, uh, the point you bring up, Ryan, about th- this game is a kind of an all or nothing matchup yeah, for, for Green Bay. Green Bay. But Adam, we did see them probably have their best. They had a five game losing streak. They had their best game of the season against Dallas. Then they lose. Uh, this is their all or nothing moment for them. But when I I want to ask you one thing regarding Philadelphia. Do you see them as a team that has, I don't want to say been figured out, but that are teams that are making adjustments to, or are they just kind of going through the lull of a 17-game season and just not playing their best football with some key players out? Yeah, Mike, I think it's two things. I think it's the the injuries. Not so much Jordan Davis anymore because you got these these you got the two guys that just came in, particularly with Linville Joseph, but the Goddard injury is just problematic. We talked about that on today's show. Uh, that dropped at 6 a.m. Eastern on every platform. It's just, it's a problem. There's nothing they can do about it, uh, about Dallas Goddard. They've got to figure out a way, guys, to get these, get the tight ends involved. Uh, it was good to see Quez Watkins. He, he caught both passes thrown to him and he scored the huge touchdown. He's another guy, by the way, could get more involved and also getting the backs involved. They, they got to alleviate that issue, Mike. I don't know what it is with running backs not involved in the Eagles' offense this season. Yeah, uh, it's something that uh, we were talking about earlier. Is yeah. Without Goddard, can they get those guys involved? Or is that just not some? Is that a Jalen Hurts thing? Or is that a play call thing? Well, look, I, I mean, Hurts kind of not quite like Wentz, but he, he's not a big check down guy, but it has nothing to do with it. it it's why aren't they designing more plays for, for the running backs? And that, that's got to happen. you got to find a way. And, and coaches have to be resilient. They now see, they saw how the Colts played them. And I got to think, I think, I got to think they change this up a little bit. All right, Eagles, Packers, Sunday Night Football, prime time, right here on 97.3 ESPN. Mel Reese, Mike Quick, have the call. And, of course, we're your home for Eagles football in South Jersey. Adam, appreciate it, buddy. All right, guys, thank you.